Hi, I'm Alfredo Perez. And I'm Julio Virgin. And today we're going to be talking about the financial analysis of Verizon and AT&T. So to start, who are our shareholders? When looking at these two firms, we saw that Verizon, Verizon is held by 68.38% um, of um, ownership institution compared to AT&T's 55.75%. In the 2017 year, Verizon had 4.13 billion shares outstanding compared to AT&T 6.18 billion shares outstanding. Uh, both of these companies are uh, have a similar uh, shareholders, uh, their top three being Vanguard, BlackRock, and State Street for both of the firms. So do uh, why do investors care about cost of capital? Uh, it is because it can help investors evaluate uh, investment options to maximize their return. Uh, investors use this data to see how a company uh, finances their operations and uh, companies can put investors at risk if they mismanage their finances. Um, some advantages of debt are tax savings because interest expense is uh, tax deductible. And um, however, some disadvantages are agency costs where uh, debt exposes a firm to uh, conflicts between shares and bondholders over investment financing and dividend decisions. So next we have, what is our cost of debt financing? So with this, we have two uh, parts. We have the pre-tax cost of debt and the after-tax cost of debt. Pre-tax cost of debt is the amount of interest uh, paid on a loan without tax deductions, which is found by adding the default spread of bonds uh, to the risk-free rate. So both of these companies have a triple B rating. And so we took that rating of 2.5% and the risk-free rate on December 31st, 2017 of 2.4% to come out of the pre-tax rate of 4.9%. Next is the after-tax um, cost of debt. So with that, we have the, the uh, interest rate. Uh, with, so the after-tax interest, I'm just gonna, we're just gonna clip all that part out. So the after-tax um, cost of debt is the interest rate of debt after deducting income tax uh, and tax savings. The tax cuts didn't take effect until 2018, so both of these companies are still paying 35%. So we found this by taking the 4.9% the times 1 minus the 35% and we both came out and they both came out to 3.18%. So neither company has an advantage over the other. So what is our cost of equity financing? Uh, we found the cost of equity by using the capital asset pricing model. We calculated the risk-free rate by estimating the long-term uh, bond returns. U.S. Treasury bonds and um, the market risk by uh, using the geometric mean and uh, using the uh, taking that against the historical stock market returns minus the long the long-term government treasuries and uh, lastly we found beta by regressing the company's returns against the market and uh, we found that Verizon's cost of equity was 3.82 percent and uh, AT&T's was 2.39 percent and uh, we would Think we would think that AT and T has a better better position there. So next we have what is our overall cost of capital. So with this, it's important for firms to evaluate this because of uh, future expansion and acquisition projects. Companies want to see that they're that their expected rate of return uh, is greater than their weighted average cost of capital. So here we see that the weighted average cost of capital for Verizon is 2.65% and AT&T is 1.95%. So with that, we see that AT&T has an advantage in when, uh, when it comes to terms of investments and wanting to expand. So can we lower this by changing our capital structure? <clears throat> Um, both companies can exchange debt for equity and uh, move towards an optimal capital structure. Uh, this will lower the cost of capital, and this will benefit both firms uh, by having more leverage and financing decisions. Uh, doing so would benefit Verizon um, because they have a um, lower cost of capital. So next we have, how would a uh, financial restructuring affect the value of the company? So here for Verizon and AT&T, we see that their current debt ratios are 42.04% uh, 
and 51.09%. So with the enterprise value of Verizon, it's over 378 billion, and AT&T's is 300, over 321 billion. If they were to both go to optimal ratios of 30%, it would increase the value of both of these enterprises. Uh, it would increase Verizon by 8.3 billion, and it would increase uh, AT&T by 1.8 billion. Uh, in this case, um, Verizon it would be better off restructuring, but with both of them being over, over, um, so when more debt, uh, when more debt uh, decrease. So with more debt create uncertainty risk. Uh, both firms' debt are above the uh, optimal ratio of 30%. Uh, more debt would decrease the flexibility that both firms have in large projects, uh, which would make both of these firms more risky. However, AT&Ts will become more risky because they have uh, more debt already. So next you have what does the competition do? So here we chose uh, two other competing firms, we took Sprint and T-Mobile, and we analyzed their current assets and liabilities and how they compare to the two firms that we are analyzing. So we see here that Sprint is more uh, weighted on long-term investments as T-Mobile is more weighted on cash. We see that T-Mobile, that Sprint has more cash than Verizon, and T-Mobile is kind of spread across uh, between cash and long-term investments. Next, we see that no, neither of these companies are really um, heavily weighted on long-term or on court current liabilities. Uh, they're more uh, invested in the long-term in long-term debt, which means uh, that can that can be anything from investments to acquisitions and such deals such as that. <coughs> So is our stock price is uh, fairly valued. Uh, currently, Verizon stock price is at $52.93, which is below the intrinsic value analysis that we concluded of $53.93 per share. Uh, this would suggest an overvaluation of the firm as of December 31st, 2017. On the other hand, AT&T's current share price is $38.88 per share. And uh, through the analysis, uh, we concluded it should be $29.54 per share, which is an undervaluation. So at this point, we would select uh, AT&T as the uh, firm to invest in. 